Good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this Tuesday, the 16th of March. Let's have a moment of silence. As we continue with our Live Lent, today's reflection was on many tongues and from Acts chapter two, verses one to two. Something touched me uh, on part of the reading was on the day of Pentecost, when Holy Spirit comes, the first thing that happens is that the disciples are enabled to tell the story of Jesus in many languages so that people from all, all over the world receive the news. As I read this, a song came to my mind, and it is, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of his grace. My gracious master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad, the honors of your name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that beats our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of counsel sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood availed for me. To God, all glory, praise and love, be now and ever again, by saints below and saints above, the church in earth and heaven. I hope as you journey through this period of Lent and season of Lent, you will have something that touches you so you can tell your story. Let us pray. And in our Book of Common Worship, evening prayer, Lent can be found on page 244. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Hear our voice, O oh Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. In the darkness of our sin, you have shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence that freed from the misery of sin and shame, we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our reading from, of Psalm is from Psalm 80. Psalm 80, which is found in page 768 in our Book of Common Worship. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, you that led Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your mighty strength and come to, to our salvation. To turn us again, O oh God. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. <coughs> o oh Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry at your people's prayer? You feed them with the bread of tears. You give them abundance of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. 
Turn us again, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You made room around it and when it had taken root, it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadows and the cedars of God by its bow. <coughs> It stretched out its branches to the sea and its tendrils to the river. Why then have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar out of the wood tears it off and all the insects of the field devour it. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold, cherish this vine with your right hand, with your right hand has planted and the branch that you made so strong for yourself. Let those who burnt it with fire, who cut it down, perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man at your right hand, the son of man you made so strong for yourself. And so we will not go back from you uh, give us life and we shall come upon your name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let us pray. Faithful shepherd of your people, as we look for the light of your countenance, restore in us the image of your glory and grant and graft us into the risen life of your son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our next reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 2, from verse 23 to, verse, to chapter 3, verse 20. <clears throat> After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of, the, out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God had their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites and God took notice of them. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Herod, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at the, this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, he said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings and have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring <clears throat> them out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites the Hittites, 
the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivitites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I'll send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I'll be with you and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors, ancestors has sent me to you and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said, Father, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Go and assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob has appeared to me, saying, I've given heed to you and to, <clears throat> to you and to what has been done to you in Egypt. I declare that I'll bring you out, out of the misery of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivitites, and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice and <clears throat> And you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Let us now go a three days journey into the wilderness so that we may sacrifice, we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. I know, however, that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless you compel, you compel by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders that I will perform in it. After that, he will let you go. Oh, something struck me. We always say we want to see God or Jesus, but here Moses is seeing God and yet he's now scared. He wants to run away. I wonder how you would feel if God appeared to you. Our next reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, from verse 15 to the end. For this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, because a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. Where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Hence, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment had been told to all the people by Moses in accordance with the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the scroll itself and all the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant that God has ordained for you. And in the same way, he sprinkled it with the blood, both <clears throat> with the blood, both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood and without the shedding of blood, 
there is no forgiveness of sins. Thus it was necessary for the sketches of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites, but the heavenly things themselves need better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that, the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to be, bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Let us turn to our prayer, the book of our common worship, continue with our prayer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We pray and offer prayer for peace and those and people for their needs. And so we first say our Magnificat. Come, let us return to the Lord for our God will richly pardon. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly people. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud to their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will reach you pardon. Today we offer intercessions for peace for individuals and their needs. As we join through Lent, we are reminded that there may be hardships in life and it often hurts and it is often dark and it leaves its mark like ashes of grief in the deepest parts of our souls where no one but God can really see. Yet even in times of ashes and struggle, even when we think we have been forgotten in our seasons of waiting as we wait during this Lent. We know that God is so there.
Let us pray for the cold and the homeless. God of compassion, your love for humanity was revealed in Jesus, whose earthly life began in the stable and ended in the pain and isolation of the cross. We hold before you those who are homeless and cold, especially in this bitter weather. Draw near and comfort them in spirit and bless those who work to provide them with shelter, food, and friendship. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray, pray for the situation in Mozambique's northern province of Cabo Delgado and for such situations where this war or maybe fighting and for the people and the cross things that are being committed. We pray for the refugees. Heavenly Father, you are the source of all goodness generosity and love. We thank you for opening the hearts of many to those who are fleeing for their lives. Help us now to open our arms in welcome and reach out our hands in support that the desperate may find new hope and lives torn apart be restored. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ your son, our Lord. Amen. On Tuesdays, we are asked, as in our normal prayer, we are asked to pray for the elderly, isolated and vulnerable. We echo God's commitment to those most at risk by praying today for those who are especially vulnerable, and isolated, praying for their deliverance, protection, and comfort. We hold before God those who care for them, that they would be strengthened and encouraged in this work. Loving God, at this time of crisis, when so many are suffering, we pray for our nation and our world. Give our leaders wisdom and health service strength, our people hope. Lead us through these parched and difficult days with the fresh springs of joy and comfort that we find in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our quiet, let us pray for those we know who are suffering, those who are ill, Lord, we pray you hear us. Amen. Holy Spirit, please fill us and help us to show the good news of God's kingdom so that others might be drawn closer to God. Amen. The collect for the day. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope you will have a restful evening. Richard will be with you here tomorrow morning.